I want to sort of take you back to how mobility over the water started because uh, mobility has really connected the planet. It's been our planet's connective tissue for thousands of years. The water has always been, uh, the world has always been connected by water. Going back early on to the Polynesians, the exploration of the Pacific, uh, the Dows and the exploration of the Arabian Peninsula, we go back and water started connecting the planet and establishing really where people lived. And we started evolving that technology. We created larger ships that created trade. We created steam engines, which brought on the Industrial Revolution and really started to connect cities and made our coastal cities uh, really the, the innovative centers. You know, it's amazing to look back and see all of the innovation that's happened in the waterways. If you look back, this map's from 1881. It took 20 to 30 days to get from here to London. And so as this mobility revolution formed, as innovation was brought to the waterways, well, humanity set up camp and we started to build. And so we turned our coastal cities like here in Dubai and we built these incredible cities all over the world. And as we did, we had to build mobility systems. And so the focus of innovation moved from the maritime space, once we created these cities, to the land and to the air. And that's been really amazing. I mean, you, you look at where we are now and where many of the pitches have been today in some of the conversations. They're focused on land mobility, like electric vehicles, like autonomous cars. Uh, now we're even seeing aviation mobility, electric aircraft, air taxis, e-VTOLs that can take you throughout a city and just pick you up and drop you wherever you need to go. But as this innovation has really focused on the land and on the air, we've also seen some, some downsides of that over-focus, that over-rotation. We've seen our infrastructure get crowded. These land and air transportation systems get congested. The infrastructure get old. And so now is actually a great time to look back to those thousands of years of history and say, let's take all of this incredible innovation on the land and in the air, and let's bring it back to the waterways, which really have not been touched for a century. Now, it actually makes a lot of sense to focus on maritime mobility for this next generation because it's incredibly relevant to most of the world. I mean, 40% of the world lives in coastal communities. It's because we used to travel by water that we're in a city on the coast today and so much of the world is. But we're not gonna service that 40% of the world with technology that looks like this. We need to bring that innovation back to the maritime domain and that's exactly what is going on right now all across the world in the maritime industry. Now at Regent, we build sea gliders, and so sea gliders fit into this new wave of maritime transportation innovation by really bringing three things to the table. Efficiency, accessibility, and collaboration. And so I'd like to use our product as sort of a case study in how these maritime transportation technologies are changing the world. Now, just a, a quick sort of introduction to the Sea Glider for those not familiar. The Sea Glider is an all electric hybrid of boats and planes uh, for regional transportation along coastal routes. Sea gliders are different from seaplanes or flying boats of the past in that they float, foil, and fly. So you board it at the dock just like it's a boat. You don't need to deal with the airport hassle. We then rise up on hydrofoils, which we get from the high-speed yachting world, the America's Cup, sail GP, as we maneuver through the harbor. And then finally, when we leave the harbor, we actually take off from those hydrofoils onto our wing to go at speeds up to 300 kilometers an hour for distances of 300 kilometers on batteries alone. Importantly, this is not just a bunch of CGI. We've actually done this here at Regions. So just to show you some of the innovation going on in this space, this is our prototype vehicle. So you can see it's starting to float as it would go through the marina up here on the hydrofoils. These are using flight controls that we take from aerospace. They're using hydrodynamics from that racing world to keep that hull super locked in and comfortable, even in a wave state. And then this first vehicle, actually, as we get speed to take off, from those hydrofoils, and then you'll see us accelerate into the air, retract the hydrofoils, and this is the state that we go on to our uh, final destination. And actually, really exciting times at Regent because we're building our full scale now, which will fly this summer around the next time we, uh, we raise our next rounds. 
Coming back to those three key traits, uh, the efficiency really pertains to the design, right? How do you build an efficient mode of transportation or an efficient vehicle? You need an efficient design. So sea gliders feature that efficient design, for example, with our hydrofoils, which raise the sea glider out of the water and give it that wave tolerance. Uh, in that low altitude flight, flying on a cushion of air like a pelican over the water. Also, in our battery systems, in our electric motor, incredibly efficient and also uh, incredibly low maintenance, which is something that many boats in the maritime domain are doing, bringing electrification into the maritime world. And finally, something that boats are sort of known for, it's, it's very big, right? Boats have this incredible ability to increase in scale. Our first sea glider is 12 seats. We're building future versions of 100 seats. And so what does that efficiency mean? That efficiency translates directly into efficient operations, which of course translate then into incredible service, really transformational opportunities. So here showing an example of what a sea glider might look like. You know, I've done that route between Dubai and Abu Dhabi many times, an hour if you're lucky, can be two hours in traffic. And so sea gliders could do that route in a half hour, reliably and consistently. So it's basically bringing the time of private aviation, of chartering a helicopter at the cost profile, essentially, of taking a taxi. Now, number two is this accessibility point. So accessibility means accessible ports, that we can use any port. It means accessible crewing, that it's easy to crew. Sea gliders just drive with left, right, fast, and slow. You don't need to train pilots to operate this. In fact, this is something that all boats really benefit from, is this incredibly easy crewing, and so you can drive a sea glider like you drive a boat. And all of this, the accessible operations, the accessible infrastructure, the accessible crewing, translates, of course, to accessible costs. And it's that accessibility that unlocks the market, that unlocks multiple use cases. So just as many vessels uh, service passengers and cargo and other missions like emergency response, so too can sea gliders serve all those missions with our accessibility. Finally, we talk about collaboration, which is a key part of future transportation systems and certainly something that's woven into the fabric of maritime technologies from the oldest days. Maritime vehicles and, and ships and vessels naturally need to share the same docks because the docks are limited. And so sea gliders can fit into that mode by sharing the same port infrastructure as other vessels. But it's more than just the port, it's actually the whole ecosystem, the future multimodal transportation system. So sea gliders will use electrified docks and share them with other electrified boats, which can be connected to airports with electric vehicles and e-VTOLs, which eventually can be connected to electric aircraft, all sharing that same charger electrification system. Uh, and so we can create this amazing passenger experience where the passenger can seamlessly go between modes uh, and, of course, have low costs and low emissions throughout their journey. So that's a lot of stuff there, and that's a lot of opportunity for sea gliders and, and indeed for all new maritime modes of transportation. Uh, and I'm actually really glad to be at the World Government Summit because it's going to take multiple stakeholders in order to do that. So who are the stakeholders? Well, maybe obviously the first one is industry, the, the innovators bringing new technology into the fold. And like I said, it's not just Regent and our sea glider that's doing this. There are hydrofoiling boats. There are electric boats bringing this uh, new technology into the water, bringing down costs, lowering emissions. There are solar-powered boats. There are vessels that are using all of these different technologies. It is truly an innovation renaissance in the maritime domain. The next stakeholder is, of course, the governments. We need supportive policy for this. We need efficient regulatory pathways, and these are getting proved out in many parts of the world today. And finally, of course, the end user, right? These are the communities who are using these technologies, using this connective tissue, the community groups, the environmentalist groups. And so we actually think about six different members of this ecosystem, of this coalition to bring these new technologies to market, certainly in the maritime domain, but scalable even beyond that, where the tech provider brings this new technology and innovates, brings that to the operator who delivers that service into the world, which is interacts with the community at the infrastructure and, of course, regulated by the government and subject to environmental considerations because we need to be stewards uh, of the planet. 
And so as an example, Regent is actually taking that approach, that ecosystem building approach, uh, and applying it uh, right here in the UAE right now. So uh, we have been hard at work connecting all these different stakeholders already and really trying to prove out this model of how do you bring a new mobility system, and particularly one in the maritime domain, to market. So it's been meeting with these government groups and getting their support. It's been uh, getting customers on board and operators from all different sects. And what we found is that this is really the model that works because when an innovator is supported by a government, there's a flywheel effect that happens. There's a positive feedback loop where then that private uh, company wants to do more innovation and more localization, and then there's more excitement. And so that's exactly what we've seen here. Uh, and in fact, uh, recently announced that we're working uh, with the Abu Dhabi Investment Office on bringing Sea Glider Manufacturing to UAE because of that support. And so that's exactly what's happening right now, is that we are maturing what these Sea Glider manufacturing uh, facilities will look like. We're looking at the jobs and the GDP growth, and all of this is because we took that uh, multi-stakeholder approach early on and had the support of the government and the policy and the investment, et cetera. So this is actually really exciting for Regent and is a blueprint that we can apply far beyond UAE and far beyond sea gliders. As an example, when you consider the manufacturing and the operators and the new tourism and everything that a sea glider service could bring, we're talking about a, a billion and a half dollars of GDP growth in the UAE, and that's just for sea gliders. So now we include all that other innovation that I showed in the maritime domain. We're talking about an order of magnitude larger. And then we take that and we replicate that all over the world. So this is what makes me so excited to be in this renaissance of maritime innovation, is that we're able to take this multi-stakeholder model and with the people in this room and, and at this conference, we can truly apply this model all over the world and bring these new technologies to market. So I really look forward to a future we're working at it at Regent where these sort of sites are just part of the everyday routine where we're bringing these new technologies that are efficient and accessible and collaborative. We're bringing the technologies from the overcrowded grounds and aviation space and reintroducing those technologies into the maritime space and really reviving our waterways. So uh, as a personal request, I look forward to working with everyone here and in the industry uh, to reconnect the world by water. Uh, once again, I'm Billy Tallheimer with Regent. Thank you.